Hardy, and thank you so much for tuning in with us this week into our studio audience. Thank you guys for coming. Joining us this week, this beautiful lady sitting to my right is Lisa Rose, and Lisa has started her own company called A Bead of Roses. Let's talk about Bead of Roses and how you got started with your passion. Uh, I opened up A Bead of Roses seven years ago, originally in Monroe, Connecticut, um, but it was, uh, it, I, I wasn't a beater growing up, a person that would make jewelry. Uh, but I just walked into a bead store in North Carolina eight years ago, enjoyed the ability to be able to make a beautiful piece of jewelry that I could instantaneously wear, knew that it would be a great type of business to open up in Connecticut, and the next year I actually opened it up. That is awesome. So I know that there's some of you talented folks out there that are really into the arts and crafts. I've got to show you a couple of her things. So. <laughs> Tell us about this sure, first one. This, it's uh, beautiful. This piece here, uh, it's called the Circle of Life. I actually mm -hmm. have it on as well. Uh, but it's just a beautiful piece. Uh, we sell this uh, through our catalog as well as our home party company mm -hmm. um, consult and sell it. But it's a beautiful piece that you're able to wear with a dress or even with a t-shirt with jeans. It's so versatile. It's one of our best selling necklaces. And it's adjustable so that you'd be able to wear it shorter or longer. So I know the question people will probably have at home, especially those women that might want to start their own craft business, yeah. is do you need to take a class? Do you really need to learn how to make these? Well, um, our, the business that I have, um, even though we're, we're a beach store, we're actually much bigger, and we can talk about that. Um, well, I, I uh, <clears throat> expanded the, the service levels of the business uh, two years ago with the National Home Party business. So it's just like Pampered Chef, mm -hmm. but it's for jewelry. So when we actually sell that piece, um, we, we sell it finished. Um, we don't have people come into the store to actually make that, um, but uh, it's uh, you know, certainly one of our best selling pieces and it, it certainly incentivizes people to want to have parties at home so they can actually win that for free. But people can come in and get bees to create yes, their own can. things. Yes, they you. can. Yep. Right? Yep. So it doesn't stop at bees and I would imagine that you would have earrings, things to make, bracelets. Mm -hmm. What about rings? Is it a little bit more difficult to no, do rings with beads? Not at all, not at all. You know, you'll often put it on stretchy wire okay. and then tie it with a search and something. You could put sterling silver, you could put gold filled beads, crystal, the sky's the limit. Uh, there's a, a really easy design where you just string it up and you know size your finger mm -hmm. and just tie a surgeon's knot and tuck the knot into this the spacer or the bead and it's a beautiful bead that's a little bit expandable and but very comfortable. Now what I love about it is you know the uniqueness of it. I love one of a kind things, yep. right? Yep. And so I would imagine like in the summer anklets must be big, yep. toe rings must be big, <laughs> things like that. So yep. seasonal, you get things that are a little bit more that people come in and try to look for craft pieces for. Absolutely, absolutely. And people come into our store, even artists that um, you know, truly have their own business also, um, they'll come into our store just to get inspired to see what's trending, what's new. Our store, A Beat of Roses, has a little bit more of a slant towards using leather and then something sparkly, leather and pearl, because we like the combination or the marriage of the two of natural mm. versus crystal, because it, it, it appeals to everyone or most people. Uh, so you know, we've, we've definitely got a little bit of an edge, but a classy edge when it comes to our jewelry design. So what else is trending now? Oh goodness, well wrap bracelets. Uh, wrap bracelets are big, but then also anything that's, that a person can wear in more than one style, meaning uh, we make a lot of lariats where it can be worn as a long necklace, but then it can also be worn as a double necklace, and it can also be worn as a bracelet. So when you can get a piece that has you know, three in one, it's huge. Huge. People love it. It's such a good value. It's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. So I know when people start businesses brand new, that the first thing you think of pretty much is your market. Who's your niche market going to be? Your market's got to be huge. Wow. From little girls, wow. Girl Scouts, brownies, all the way to grandmothers. Exactly. Who do arts and crafts. Yes. Correct? Yes. So the uh, whole gamut. Yep. All right. We actually have, we do birthday parties in the store too. So besides being a, a full service bead store, we also do birthday parties where girls as young as five years old have incredible birthday parties. Party. Yeah, it's not just a regular plastic bracelet or and ring that they walk out with. The jewelry that a five-year-old and a six-year-old and seven-year-old all the way up until 99 years old, the 
jewelry is gorgeous. Yeah, it's keepers, why? yeah. It's keepers. You know, the, the, the one thing we hear all the time whenever moms schedule their daughter's birthday party at the store, when they invite 15 kids to come to the store, all 15 kids show up. Show up. Yeah. And oftentimes the moms stay because they're just... They're, 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 they're so impressed and inspired to be in a store where the quality of the product is excellent, but also their daughter is making something that when they walk out of the birthday party, they are so inspired and so happy. Yeah. If the child's happy, the mom's happy. But let's talk about how you've also parlayed that into not just jewelry. Yep. Look at this beautiful Christmas yep. ornament. So that's it's absolutely uh, gorgeous. Tell us about these crystals on here. So um, this, uh, the, the, the translucent bead, this is called Moonstone. It's faceted Moonstone. And this is actually Snow Quartz. Uh, or my store is in Newtown. And um, <clears throat> uh, that is a design that we actually made two years ago uh, after the Sandy Hook tragedy. Mm -hmm. And that is our Sandy Hook original snowflake ornament. Uh, the, the colors, anytime a, a young child is in our store we're very playful with them and uh, you know so anytime we've ever used moonstone to us it's just a very angelic pure type of stone and then the combination of the snow quartz together it yeah, was for gorgeous. us it it's was the right design for what the community needed um, the yeah it's beautiful actually a lot of people they certainly put it on the Christmas tree but they actually keep it all year round as a sun catcher too they put it yeah, on I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. or even on I, you know, you're, uh, I've seen them from chandeliers. I've seen people use hurricane lamps and a big candle in the middle and then drop that on the outside of a hurricane lamp and the entire room will actually sparkle. It's beautiful. It's a great idea. Yeah. So you do a lot um, outside of your business for the community. And so I would like to show a short video clip. But first, before we see that clip, mm -hmm. tell us about this family that you and your pals went and helped. It's just... Oh, it got yeah. my heart. Just yeah, yeah, more. and that was actually the the first one of the first big um, events that got me hooked on just helping people mm -hmm. uh, and always doing something. Back then, it was once a year something big like a home makeover, which that was in the Bronx. But um, uh, you know, we've we've since I'm addicted to it now. Now, now it's not just once a year. It's you know, it's what oh, I do. Yeah. But, you know, my business. It's a it's a for profit business, and I have a managing partner that's that's with me also, uh, running the business. But uh, we get a chance to give back on a daily basis by working with so many foundations to help them raise money for their missions, and in return, uh, you know, we get a chance to make beautiful jewelry for them most of the time. Um, but be part of their mission too. Uh, so it's, it's, it's twofold. Uh, so going back to uh, Sheila, uh, when we found out about the family and, and just the tragedy of what had taken place, uh, it was a phone call uh, to, to Rich first, uh, as mm -hmm. ironically, uh, where I just ran it by him to say, you know, what, what, what do you think about doing a home makeover? We were all in Yeah, so it's a grandmother that lost her daughter and gonna take in six of her daughter's children. Eight. Or eight, yeah. eight of her daughter's yeah. children. Yeah. All right. so and they're all young babies. And they're all young. Young kids. So let's take a quick pause here, and we're going to take a look at that video clip. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Six children that live here watched as their mother was stabbed to death by her ex-lover in August. Since then, they've been raised by their struggling grandmother. And it's an early Christmas gift for a woman who hasn't had it easy. She's raising her six grandchildren on her own after their mother was murdered in front of them. But now the holiday will be a little brighter thanks to some complete strangers. It all started this morning when Sheila and her six grandkids were picked up from church in a limo for a day in the city.
Little did they know more surprises were in store. Dozens of volunteers from a group called New York Power Team converged on Sheila's Bronx apartment for a home makeover. While they were distracted, volunteers feverishly stripped down and built back up their Bronx home. They painted walls, scrubbed floors, and rolled out rugs. It was out with the old and in with the new, transforming the family's apartment. Call it a labor of love. Call it a random act of kindness. Just don't tell this tireless team of volunteers they can't make a difference in one day. Whoever gets to hear about this, I hope they get inspired by this. It's one day out of, out of our life. Actually, this ambitious group had only 12 hours to completely make over this house, from new bathrooms to furniture, appliances, and don't forget the Christmas presents and the tree, all for a Bronx family in desperate need of a break. Well, they don't have any mom or dad. They don't have any mentors whatsoever. The grandmother is, is doing everything she physically can. We want them to know that, that we're, we'll be here for them. Hope, faith, you know, that there are, you know, just to know that there are good people in the world that really, really care. This is actually the second time some of these volunteers are here in this apartment. Last month, they delivered a Thanksgiving basket here. They say they were so taken with the family, they wanted to do more. They're excited. They were hugging us because we brought food and games and things for the kids at Thanksgiving. So they went to work spreading holiday cheer to a family who needed it. What a beautiful thing you guys did. It absolutely beautiful, warms my heart. So as we wrap, please tell our viewers you know, how um, they too can be inspired to start their own business and how they can reach you at A Bead of Roses. Sure, sure. Um, the, the website's easy. It's, a, it's abeadofroses.com, just like a bed of roses, mm -hmm. but a bead, bead of, of roses. roses to show our creativity. Uh, you know, in regards to um, Getting started with business, uh, I, I would say just, you know, you'll find your passion, but sometimes, sometimes business is presented to you or an opportunity will be presented to you where maybe that's not what you thought you were going to do. I certainly had n no intention growing up to own a bead store. I didn't even know what a bead store was. Uh, but it was just, um, it, was, it was an opportunity. I fell in love with the, the, the art of being able to, without formal training, make jewelry with you know, some good tools and some good instruction. Um, but uh, you know, I, I wasn't afraid to fail. Uh, I, I, that's you know, one of the biggest things is, don't be afraid to fail, but don't start off so big. Start off small. My first store was 600 square feet. Then I moved it to 1,100 square feet. Then I moved it to a 1,200 square foot store. And now my store is a 3,100 square foot store. Wow. So start small. You know that old cliche of you know starting the business in a garage or in the basement. Well, I was pretty close. I was in a 600 square foot st store. Um, but as I grew the business, I kept putting the money back in the business. And now it's. I think it's probably the biggest yes. beach store in Connecticut. But Absolutely, yes. reaping the rewards and blessing others. I want to thank you so much, Lisa Rose, for thank coming you. and being on the program. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We've got the gentleman that is going to lead us in the right direction. <laughs>